Welcome back to Sound Just Like a Pro. My name is William, and today we're gonna to be discussing how to do a proper voiceover and what environment you need, what gear you need, and a little bit of how to do the work itself and how to use the, the instrument that God gave you to do what you need to do as a voiceover artist. In addition to live sound production and music and, and recording and everything that I get to do for a living, I am also a signed voice actor with BMG Talent as of the recording of this video. So I am constantly uh, getting pitched jobs to do voiceovers for and, and to do different characters and, and things like that. So that's super fun and that's that's something that I get to do that's reminiscent of my college days and my audio production degree that I have it was geared a lot toward radio studio production. So we got to do like the commercials where you got to be that character or do that voice or do that thing. And so it's really fun and it's, it's a great way to have one more creative outlet as a voiceover artist. But before we get into any of that, I want to give you a free resource. It's an ebook called EQ Basics, Your Blueprint to a Better Mix. And you may not be mixing bands or music or anything like that, but you have a voice. If you're going to be mixing a voiceover, equalization plays a major factor in how your deliverable product sounds. And in today's world, a lot of people that are asking for voiceovers aren't just asking to hear you anymore. They're wanting to get something that is the final product or something very close and they want you to have a professional studio. So that's in part why we're making this video. That's why I'm giving you this book for free, this ebook. So download it at doitjustlikeapro.com forward slash EQ book and start making better mixes with your equalization. So let's get into it. So there are three things that you need to do to have a proper voiceover setup and to go from reading that copy on the page and those words on the page to getting something that's gonna sound really awesome in the client's ears. Those three things are the instrument itself. That's your voice box, that's your nasal passages, that's your hydration for the day. That's how much water you've had and, and how well you've taken care of your voice. You can drink two gallons of water right before you record the voiceover, but there's a saying in, in vocal recording that it's not the water you drink now, it's the water you drank yesterday. That's going to help you in this session. So definitely always stay hydrated. Get ready to protect your instrument that you bring to the front of that microphone. And so that's really step one, but that's probably not why you're here. That's that's a whole other tangent. I'm gonna eventually try to get that worked in and, and teach on that as well. But today we're here to talk about the, um, the treatment of your room and the gear that you need to, to have to get into the computer. So we're gonna kind of do this in three parts. We'll talk about, eventually we'll talk about the voice itself, but today we're talking about room treatment and microphones, everything you need to get into the computer. So let's talk about your room. A lot of people will <laughs> disagree with this, I think. If you've been around at all, or if you've Googled any of this, you see the little isolation booths and, and things like that, where you just stick your head in and there's a microphone and a, and a little light so you can read your phone and read the copy and it's really smashed. That's what a lot of people choose to put into the computer, which is just a dead, sterile environment, just no life whatsoever, and then bring it back out with, with canned reverbs or delays or and adding space back in digitally. But I like to go the opposite way. I like to treat my room with uh, the proper diffusion. I like to treat my room with sound deadening panels that will alleviate people moving around in the house, people moving around outside, uh, things like that. It's things that will cut out the, the things that will ruin your take. I do like to have that in my room or in my, in my studio, but I don't like to squelch everything. So what I have, you see the black behind me, that's not paint, that is actually short fiber carpet, which catches a lot of the low end, just reverb that my voice naturally has and the, the boominess that my voice has. It does a lot to mitigate that while not stripping it out entirely. So I love that, that's really nice. And also you can't really see it, but pretty much everywhere in this room has a surface that breaks up the the high end and makes it uh, think of like the way that light hits a mirror ball and bounces around the the room bounces little pinpoints of light everywhere every surface that you have in your studio or in your bedroom or wherever you're going to be doing a voiceover every surface that's not a flat wall 
is doing a lot to help scatter the sound in the same way that a mirror ball will scatter light. So you can have a lot of life in your voice and in your track without having to add a lot back in digitally and without having it just reflecting everywhere if you have a lot of stuff in the room. I mean, you can see my studio monitors even have uh, little extra contours and things like that. And all of that is an effort to scatter the sound around and to break up those reflections that turn into uh, compounding reverb and things like that. So sound deadening, keeping everything out of your room that needs to be out of your room, but then diffusion. So like my guitar rack, I mean, literally anything that's not a flat surface is diffusion, but also you can buy diffusion mats and like and posters for the wall that have the little uh little surfaces and things like that all of that is going to be paramount to giving you a track that has life but a track that's not overwhelmed with room reverb before it hits the mic because you do want you want the opportunity to add some of that stuff back in later so that's the main difference that is the difference in the way that i like to do it versus the way that a lot of other people do it People like to close themselves in and like stand between all the sweaters in their closet or or get the the thing that you just stick your head up in there and record that squelches the life out of the track entirely. But I like to have some vibrance in my track. But I mean, that comes with time and you learn what room to be in and, and how to how to set up everything just right where it scatters it and and try it both ways. I'd love to hear in the comments of this video like what you like to do, or if you agree with me or disagree with me, I'd like to have that discussion. So definitely comment down below and feel free to say whatever you would like about that. But that's just how I do it. That's how I like to do it. And I mean, I like to think that my tracks sound awesome. So treat your room. That's that's pretty much it. You can have the best voice in the world. You can even have $30,000 worth of gear, but if you're not in the right environment, it's not gonna work. So definitely, Spend some time, spend some money if you have to, to get the environment just right. So let's move on to microphones. I'm gonna talk specifically about everything from the computer on uh, in another video. But in this one, I just wanted to talk about the environment and the thing that captures your voice, which is the microphone. I had a college professor that told me one time, spend all of your money on the front end of the signal chain and on the back end, which is microphones and speakers. Now that's a little outdated, I think, because there's a lot uh, to say for certain preamps and things like that uh, in today's world. So it's kind of like you need a good microphone, a good set of speakers, but somewhere along the way, you cannot skimp out on the preamps because you have to have that. But as far as microphones go, there are a lot of budget things that you can get that sound okay. And, you know, I am actually living proof of that. I'm not really an advocate for uh, like a race to the bottom and how cheap of a microphone I can get before it doesn't sound good anymore or whatever. Like I do enjoy spending money on quality gear, but I want to tell you about one mic in particular that I found that I really got lucky on. It was the most expensive microphone I could afford at the time which is nothing in comparison to um, everything that's out there in like the Neumann and Telefunken range and things like that. But this mic is actually designed to mirror and to mimic, I guess is a better word, to mimic the Telefunken U47. Now that's not the Neumann U47, that's a different thing entirely, but the Telefunken U47 is a tube condenser mic. It's about, you know, so long or whatever and a large big diaphragm and it has a uh, preamp tube in it and it has a box that controls the polar pattern and it it's really awesome and I think I paid about $300 for it and it's budget alternative of the Telefunken U47 which is significantly more than that but actually it's the microphone that I'm using to record this right now and in fact it's the one that I've used to record most of the sound and most of the sound just like a pro videos so far mainly because my shotgun mic was out on loan to somebody uh you know the show must go on so I, I had to use that mic and it's actually right above us here so we'll bring it in it 
and that's that. And we have the little pop filter that goes over in front of it. You can have the nicest microphone in the world. This could be the $4,000 Neumann. And if you do your plosive syllables, your, your P's and your T's and anything that puffs air into the microphone, it doesn't matter. It's just going to hear the, the mistakes better. Definitely get a pop filter. They're just so cheap these days. And we'll put a link in the description below. But a pop filter and a microphone is awesome. And I'll put a link to one of these as well. And you can uh, try that guy out as well. And that's about it for part two. I know it's weird jumping straight into part two, but I wanted to give you something that you could do right now, which is start making a plan for a better microphone or the right microphone and start looking around your environment and figuring out where you can add diffusion, where you can add sound dampening or deadening, and just see how you can start making a better atmosphere for you to do your work in and something that will reward you with a better sound once it hits the computer. And if this video has helped you in any way, if I've gotten you that one step closer to doing what you want to do and to becoming a voice actor or becoming a better voice actor or even a, a mix engineer that produces voiceovers for other people, I want to hear about it. I want to know how I've helped you. So leave a comment below and tell me that and share it with whoever you know that might need to hear this exact same advice and this exact same thing that you just heard. I'd love to invite you to subscribe to the channel and click the link below and get the EQ Basics book, your blueprint to a better mix. You may not be mixing music, but this is voiceover stuff and there's voice stuff in there for all types of voices as well. It's gonna help you get your voice to jump out of the speakers and into the ears of your client or your casting director, or whoever's listening for that thing that they wanna hear. I wanna help you give it to them with, with that book. And it's at doitjustlikeapro.com forward slash EQ book. So until we connect again, get out there and sound just like a pro. We'll see you next time. Thanks.